Welcome to the Jill on Money podcast. It is Wednesday, January 20th. It is inauguration day. Yes, it's here. Let's get through today. Let's hold our hands. Let's bring our collective prayers together. If you believe, then send out some prayers to someone. If you are not a believer, just put some good vibes in the universe. Let's all be safe. That's the most important thing. If you are thinking that this is just going to be one of those crazy days and you know you get done with this podcast or maybe you wait to listen to this podcast till things settle down, that's fine. If you have any sort of financial question that's bubbling up in the next few days, maybe you'll hear about things from the new administration and it maybe perks you up a little bit, send us an email. The email address, askjill at jillonmoney.com, askjill at jillonmoney.com. That's our email address. And if you're on our website, if you're on jillonmoney.com, there's a contact button. You can click it and you can then send us a note that way. If you would like to join us on the program and you want to maybe just have a, a, a maybe a little bit more of an in-depth conversation, it's great if you, when you send us your note, just say, hey, I want to come on the air with you. We will do the rest. And when I say we, I mean Mark, because Mark Talercio is the best executive producer in the world. So with that said, Let's get on to your questions. Today, joining us on the air is Jason, who is, guess where? Washington, D.C. So, Jason, welcome to the Jill on Money Show. What brings you on with us today? Tell me what is going on in your financial life and how we might be able to help you out. Sure. I have, I think, after last year, there's a lot of uncertainty uh, in the world in terms of making financial plans for myself. And so I have a few goals and a sort of array of different assets and money sitting in different buckets and wondering how to, to allocate those most effectively in, in planning and then also hedging against some of those uncertainties. Mm-hmm. Um, the big thing is uh, I'm a lawyer here in D.C., so I have a chunk of student loans standing out there that I don't know uh, while they're at zero percent interest right now. If I should just uh, let them sit, start paying them down in big chunks, create a plan to pay them down, Mm -hmm. what to do about those. Also, not um, sure I'm going to stay in the law biz for much longer, potentially. And so if I am going to transition and do something else um, and maybe travel in the meantime, how to fund myself in the meantime and then whatever travel I want to do to make sure I can do that as well and have a little bit more of a flexible timeline on that, too. Okay. So how old are you, Jason? I am 30. 30. Okay. And are you single or partnered? Single. Okay. And um, let's talk about those student loans. Tell me what is the outstanding student loan balance and are these federal loans or private loans? Uh, They are federal loans uh, currently in the pandemic forbearance situation and they are at about 77,000 outstanding. Okay, I'm just going to breathe a little bit here because that was a, that's a big number. You just sort of threw it out there. Um, 77,000. So forbearance is right now until the end of January. I bet that you're going to get more time anyway because I think that just in general, there's going to be when the new Department of Education is sort of up and running, they're going to really keep that in place. But that said, you're at 0% right now. Are these five and a half, six ish percent loans? Yeah, that's. I think uh, the average when you put it all together is about five point nine percent for that. Okay, you're still working as a lawyer, right? Correct. Yes. How much? How much are you earning? Uh, about two twenty a year gross. Oh, I love that number. I wish you would like. I wish you'd like your job more. <laughs> um, and on two twenty, you were able to knock down the the debt. Is that what was happening for you? Uh, yeah, I would just. Uh, whenever I could throw any extra money uh, at them and, and paid down a, a pretty significant portion already. Okay. And how much money um, do you have saved? Are you participating in the law firms? Uh, are you, I, I didn't ask. I'm sorry. You work at a firm or for an organization right now? A uh, law firm. Yeah. And they have a 401k? Uh, they do. Yes. And you participate in that? I do. How much money is in the 401k right now? Uh, there is about seventy one thousand in the firm's four hundred one k. I also mm-hmm. have about nine thousand in an old four hundred one k sitting out there. Okay. Any other retirement assets? Any other you know old things kicking around? A Roth IRA maybe or anything like that? Uh, nothing like that. I do have about eight grand in an HSA. Just okay. Yeah. Good. 
That's good. And what about um, just savings, boring emergency reserve? So that's where uh, I'm hoping you can help with because I've been funneling all my extra income from the last couple months into that rather than putting them towards my loan. So I have about 75000 in short-term savings. That's great. Now, you know I don't want you. I, you know what Mark said to me? He sends me your email and he says to me, get ready to crush someone's dream. And he started calling me the dream crusher. So I don't want you to get upset about that because I want to try to help you get where you want to go, but I want you to do it efficiently in smart ways. Okay. So you say you may not want to be a lawyer. I mean, do you despise this? Do you, are you, uh, no matter what I say, could you stay for another year? Could you like, tell me a little bit about like this I, idea of taking time off and where you stand on that? Um, I think a year would be, would be pushing it. I could do, you know, would is six to nine months doable? I think, I think there's a path to maybe something like that. Okay. I, I think it's just more long term. I'm eventually going to need, some, it's going to happen sooner or later, right? Whether it's in six months, a year, somewhere down the line. I mean, I don't know what your next thing is and you have any, if you have an idea about what you think your next career might be, but I certainly would rather make a transition, not in the heat of a pandemic, you know, where the labor market is shifting around like crazy. Do you have an idea about what you think you might want to do next? Not especially, no. I'm very aware that the cash flow will go down, right? Whatever it is, it will probably be making at least a little bit less than I am now. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about this time off and what you think you're going to need to, how much it's, how much you, of the, okay. So of the 75 grand in cash, how much of that would be allocated to time off, pay for everything, trip, blah, blah, blah. Like what What am- amount of money are you thinking it would take? I would say it'd probably be about fifteen to 20,000 of that for the actual time off travel around. Uh-huh. And then I've also have about, I, I've estimated, I have, it's like a back to life sort of line item in my mm-hmm. planning uh, of about thirty to 40,000 for that. Um, so all, all in, you're looking at anywhere from probably like 40 to 45 to 60,000 would be, uh, it, it's just what I'm guessing right now. I have, I have no idea if that's like How, super low, super high. And when you say back to what you mean, like, that's what you want to keep in reserve as you go, then come back and say, I need to get a job. I've got to pay my expenses, et cetera. Right. right. Yes. That okay. Is- gotcha. So, I mean, there's not a lot of money to spend on anything else then. How much are you saving in this account on a monthly basis? I'm putting in about a thousand dollars from paychecks and probably about four thousand just in extra cash that I end up having. Not on a monthly. You mean five grand a month or just Yeah, about five grand a month. And are you maxing out your retirement account, your four oh one K? I am, yes. You're really married to this idea. I'm not gonna tr- in other words, I am not going to convince you not to do this, right? It's just a question of like the timing. Right. Yeah. It, it's, it's the, you know, do I need a longer runway? Do I need to yes. you know, that? <laughs> right? yeah. I'd love, yes. I'd love to do it tomorrow, but realize that a little bit of planning can go a long way. Okay. Here's what I'm going to suggest to you. First of all, I mean, I know it may not be your dream job, but um, I think that for a couple of things you have to really take into account. Number one is that you've got to stockpile more cash. You just must. Um, And so that to me is arguing for like, this should be a, you know, maybe end of 2021, but really it's probably if we could, if I could wave my magic wand, the Jill Schlesinger wand over you, I would say, take this 2021, this year as a transition year. And the transition year means you've got to have way more money building up in cash, way more money. And the reason is that I don't know how long this forbearance is going to last. And I don't know, you know, let's assume that you have forbearance this whole year. What you may be able to do is knock down the student loans you know, as forbearance is expiring and get rid of a bunch of that so that you can go off on your trip and not have to worry about your student loans. But I don't know what that's going to be. And we're going to have a lot more information about that in the next, you know, three to six months. The bigger issue is if you can save five grand a month, you're just going to put yourself in far better financial shape to make this leap. And I think that you're probably, 
looking at a period of time where, you know, if you give yourself a longer runway, it will make the transition a lot more seamless. In this time also, if you're really thinking about it, I think you should have an idea of what what you think you want to do next. And if this is the year where you say, um, I'm going to be like Shonda Rhimes, it's the year of yes. So yes, you can maybe do this, but I want you to wait to do it until you have a better idea. Because obviously making $180,000 a year in your next career is a lot different than making $85,000 a year, right? And we've just got to try to figure out for you what you think that next thing is. And it would behoove you to use this time to give yourself some flexibility. And I think that would make more sense to you. So do you think you could like get on board with that? Yes. I think, I think that that something like that could work. The reason I want to put this in a broader, like a broader, like, what am I doing next? Is that I think, like I said, I think that, you know, if I knew that you were going to be working, you know, in-house at a nonprofit, and I'm making this up, and that, you know, you knew that those kinds of jobs would pay you 150 grand a year, I might not feel as anxious as I feel right now wondering what's next. And, you know, like I said, I think that doing this during a pandemic is really difficult. And more importantly, you're going to travel during the middle of a pandemic. I'm going to go like full on Jewish mother on you. Like well, you can't do this. Come on. Well, no. Yeah. And obviously that part would wait until it's it's safe to do so. There's a lot of uncertainty here. A lot of, you know, play in the joint on when each of these things is happening. And exactly. Then So some of it is then what do I do with, you know, if I am going to have this bucket of cash, is there something I should be doing with it in the meantime? Or? Well, I mean, look, I would be paying down some of my student loan debt. Because I think that when it does ramp back up, it is 6%. You don't have to do it right now. And again, I think we'll know more information. If you knew that, you know, you have all of this year at 0%, there's not a real reason, any big reason to pay it off right this second, right? But you can start paying off principal a little bit. But I want to really give you as much liquidity as possible because maybe the last thing you do before you walk on your, you know, your plane to, to uh, South Africa is you send a check to the federal student loans and say, here's $77,000 goodbye. I mean, it really does depend on what comes next and what the, the rules are. I wouldn't want you to take all of the liquidity that you've socked away and pay off that debt, leaving you without liquidity. That's why I said to you, you know, if the trip is 20 and you need sort of 40-ish, let's call it for, you know, re-entry to get you back in, you know, maybe it's really if you need 50. So which would, which is like maybe all the cash you have right now is cash you must keep on hand. I wouldn't want you to spend that money down on your student loans just yet. So I think that if you have this whole year ahead of you and we know what the rules are going to be around forbearance for student loans, that might be much more helpful to you. And think of this. I know that you're you're probably saying like, oh, I'm getting 0% in my cash account. I get it. Right now, that is just the price you're paying for easy access and liquidity. You know, you could put it in a higher interest money market or a higher yielding savings account. But truly, I think it would be very much in your best interest to think of that as I am paying a price to have safety. That's all it is. Okay? Gotcha. The old retirement account, is there any reason that you should move your old retirement account into your current retirement account just to make your management easier? Uh, Not really, no. And I think then I could also do a Roth conversion. Exactly. It's a fun this year at some point. That's exactly what I'm thinking. So why don't we roll the old one into your current 401k? And will you promise me to do one thing, Jason? Will you call me back before you actually decide like when you're going off on this great adventure so that we can talk a little bit about like where things stand? Sure. Yeah. All right. I I encourage you to do that. Everyone's going to want to hear where you're going. So this is going to be interesting. I think the game plan of 2021 is your year of transition. Get yourself set, get yourself ready. You may be booking your trip in the fourth quarter of this year. You know, like I'm not saying you're not going to do that. I'm just saying this is the time to really concentrate on building up my cash and making sure that I'm at least thinking about other ideas. And, you know, maybe the best idea, you know, they always say it's the easiest time to find a job is when you have one, is to just talk to other people who do cool stuff and say, tell me more about what you do. Maybe that's an idea that's worth pursuing, right? So just like maybe once a week, 
make it a priority to talk to someone in a different industry and like interview them. Be curious and see if there's something that jingles and jangles and makes you excited. Okay. Sure. Yeah. I think that's it. Any other questions for me before I crush your dream further? Uh, no, no. And I think I think at least a little bit of my dream has survived. So, so thank you for sharing, sharing a little smidge of it. <laughs> All right, good. Jill Schlesinger, dream crusher extraordinaire. I apologize. But anyway, I wish you the best of luck. And I thank you so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it. All right. If you, like Jason, have a dream that you would like me to crush, just give us... No, I w- I'm trying to help. You see, just send us an email with any question on your mind. Ask Jill at JillOnMoney.com. Ask Jill at JillOnMoney.com. If you're on our website at JillOnMoney.com, don't forget, sign up for the free weekly newsletter. It's free. It comes out every week. Mark does a great job with it. As always, we want to remind you more than ever, let us all be nice to each other. Number one, wash your hands, wear your masks, maintain your physical distancing, and uh, let's just all breathe into the universe. Let's breathe in the good stuff. Let's breathe out the bad stuff. And let's try to be nice today and for every day going forward. But today especially, let's be nice to each other. Thanks for listening. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Tomorrow.